Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover saying Roll Tide and welcome to Crimson Drive on this Thursday afternoon. It's great to have all of you back with us on the CTSN Facebook and Twitter pages for this weekly talk show that we have on everything Alabama athletics. Once again, a really successful week for the Crimson Tide, and now we get to dive into it by taking a look at some of today's headlines leading into our show. Coming up on the show today, Montana Felt. She is the SEC Pitcher of the Week, one of the best pitchers in the nation. She'll be joining us for a one-on-one -on -one conversation coming up first. Then we'll also be talking with the men's golf coach at the University of Alabama, Jay Sewell, after a pretty good run for the Crimson Tide at the SEC Tournament. And then we'll hear comments from Patrick Murphy as we get ready for the final road series of the year for the Alabama softball team. They'll be at Georgia coming up this week. And then also comments from head coach Nick Saban. We just had the 10-year anniversary of the devastating tournament of April 27, 2011 here in Tuscaloosa and across the state of Alabama. So Coach Saban will reflect on that coming up later in the show. Take a look at some other headlines. The Crimson Tide baseball team this past weekend won the Friday game against the University of Kentucky. Saturday, the game was rained out in Lexington. And then on Sunday, Kentucky swept a doubleheader 5-2 and then 11-0 in the second game. So the Crimson Tide trying to bounce back, and they did bounce back in Birmingham on Tuesday night, earning a 9-3 win at Regents Field. Really good work done on the mound by Jake Eddington, who had to make a spot start for the Crimson Tide. Pitched well as Alabama got the win over the Blazers. Now coming up this weekend. It's Alabama back at home at Sewell Thomas Stadium for the next to last home series of the year as Alabama welcomes in Missouri for a three game series again Friday through Sunday. So critical games coming up. Hope to see all of you at Sewell Thomas Stadium this weekend. Now, a lot of you last weekend were at Road Stadium to watch the Alabama softball team as they got to step out of conference and play 13th-ranked Louisiana. Picked up a 5-3 win on Saturday, 5-1 on Sunday. Really good work for Patrick Murphy's team there. Now, this weekend, again, on the road at Georgia for the last road series of the year. And then after that, it's home against Ole Miss, home for the SEC championships, and we also hope home for the NCAA regional and then super regional before hopefully a trip to the Women's College World Series. Montana Fouts. Great pitching against both Southern Miss and Louisiana last week. So she was named the SEC Pitcher of the Week, and we'll be having a conversation with her coming up in just a few minutes. The men's golf team last weekend down in St. Simons Island, Georgia. Just a gorgeous course where Alabama played at the 2021 Men's Golf Championship. Advanced to the semifinal before losing to the eventual champion Vanderbilt Commodores. But all in all, a really solid week for Alabama men's golf. And they will still await their fate in terms of the NCAA Regional coming up as that selection show will be next Wednesday and then playing after that May 15th through the 17th. So we dive into all of that with Coach Sewell in here, the latest on Crimson Tide men's golf coming up. Great note as well from Alabama track and field to Mary Clark, the USTFCCCA National Athlete of the Week. She also earned the SEC Women's Runner of the Week Award. It was last week in Baton Rouge at the LSU Alumni Gold Meet. She ran personal record of 10.96 in the 100 meter. That was a school record time and also is the seventh fastest time in school history. So great work to her and congratulations and roll tide on those honors, both from the National Track and Field Association as well as the Southeastern Conference. Well, speaking of the Southeastern Conference, they handed a weekly award to Montana Fouts earlier in the week as the SEC Pitcher of the Week, something she has won before. And just everybody in college softball knows that one of the most dominating pitchers in the game resides here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, pitching for the Crimson Tide. So I think you'll enjoy this conversation with Montana Fouts as we hear about how the season is going for her. And we also kind of dive into the mechanics of what makes her such a special pitcher for the Crimson Tide. Joined now by Montana Fouts in Montana. What has been the secret to your success recently? Oh, I don't know about that. I'd probably just say that trusting my teammates, trusting my stuff. Um, I think that we're playing some good defense. We're scoring the runs. And I think we're just trusting each other and really relying on our, on our team chemistry at this point. Yeah, how has the team chemistry been building ever since last season when the pandemic ended the season very abruptly and now you're at this point where you hoped you would be? Uh, just how has the chemistry been building over the last few months? I mean, I would say definitely a lot. I think a lot has to do with that because we have been through so much together. Um, at the beginning of the season in January, Murph, Murph always talks about we can do hard things. So I think that realizing that we can do those hard things like – all the stuff dealing with COVID and then like bouncing back after a loss, like we can do that with each other and it makes it easier when you have a family to do that with. So I think just realizing that um, brings us closer together. Who are some of the real leaders on this team? 
I think everybody can bring like a little piece of themselves. I don't think that there's just like one particular person. I think everybody um, from a super senior all the way down to freshmen is bringing stuff to impact his team in a great way. And do you feel like you have even grown maybe a little bit in your own voice so since you were the freshman and then had the sophomore season now back this year for your third year in Crimson Tide Jersey? Um, yeah, I think so. I think that I've been blessed to be able to learn from since my first, since I got here, since the seniors, the coaches, um, even people the same grade as me. I mean, we're like, we're, we're just learning together. And I think that just experience does help, but just being surrounded by people that are willing to help you um, when you ask for it. So I think um, that impacts that as well, too. Looking at this past week for you, you were named the SEC Pitcher of the Week. Uh, you got to start against Louisiana, another very strong start, and then you get to come out of the bullpen to close out the Sunday game. Just what have you liked about uh, having that different experience, the starting, but also the challenge coming out of the pen lately? Um, I definitely think they're two different things, but at the same time, like you're looking to start the game, you know, um, to kind of set the tone, and like closing, you're just looking to close the door, like nobody gets on base, like that's really the mindset that I would like to have the entire game. So I think it's nice to be able to think that way in the first and second inning, but also in the sixth and seven and all the ones in between. But I think that it just kind of helps me in the future as well. Do you repeat the same preparation process for start versus relief work? Yes, but at the same time, I just kind of like have to learn a lot about timing and like with myself, just because I like to get how long it takes me to get ready and when it takes me to get ready and how many innings and sometimes the game will kind of decide that for myself, Um, but just kind of being ready whenever they look out there and say Montana, but no doubt. And we kept hearing from Coach Murphy all offseason that this team is going to have a lot of depth and obviously with some big injuries, especially position players, we've seen that. But what can you tell us about the rest of the pitching staff and what they provided in the way all of you are competing with one another, but ultimately competing for Alabama? I mean, I think it's just incredible just because since we've gotten here this fall, I think that we've just been competing, like you said, with each other, but also we're willing to help each other in like any type of way. I think that we've really created like a family atmosphere with the team, but also like within the pitching staff. And I think we're always asking questions with each other. Um, Coach Steph has a huge part of that, obviously, but I think that even aside from that, like the pitchers ourselves, like we can, we can learn from each other. So I think that's huge and what's gonna um, make a big difference for us. You mentioned Stephanie Van Brakel pro throw. Uh, They had the stat earlier today on the Alabama softball account that uh, she, of course, had 10 straight or excuse me, six straight starts of 10 plus strikeouts to begin 2006. Now you've had a similar streak. You got to love that she's able to pass it forward the way she does. And just what can you tell us about her as a pitching coach? I mean, what I love most most about Coach Steph is just that we've been she's been so adaptable with so many pitchers. I mean, I couldn't even imagine and six completely different pitchers. So it's it's hard enough as it is, but like, she's just so personable and um, cares about us individually and not just as pitchers. So I think that that makes us um, love her even more. Um, she's just, I mean, she's one of us, so. And when she comes out to the circle to talk to you, if things aren't going your way in an inning, what is she main, what's her main message usually? Is it all about mechanics or is it more about mindset? I would definitely say more mindset because one thing that I try to do at least is trust my stuff in the game. So it's not really thinking like, do this, do this, do this. Um, It's mostly just, you've been here, you've done this. It's just kind of like take a deep breath and kind of come up with a game plan of what we're going to do for the rest of the inning Um, and just kind of taking a deep breath. And speaking of mechanics, so what are the different pitches that you throw? And then when you're having success, what are the pitches doing to the hitters? Um, I mean, Right now, it's kind of been like the same thing a little bit. I'm kind of trying to develop all of those, like a curve rise. I mean, like the normal the normal stuff. But I think that um, one of the things that really work in is just like a little bit of all of them. And I'm able to locate those where I want them. And it's kind of I'm learning more how to spin it through the zone, which is helping me because it's can be a strike or it can look like a strike. So I think that's the biggest difference maker um, for me right now, just being able to make it spin through the zone. Have you learned more how to add and subtract when you need it a little more? Have you had more of a feel for that the more you pitch? Yeah, I think that that's just something that I've gotten since I've played longer, especially in the SEC, like you're playing hitters one through nine, that could be a three hole anywhere else. So I think it's just realizing like who you're up against and what you need to do and kind of watching them and not just myself, like what do I need to do against their swing type of thing. So I think it's just a little bit of all of that.
And you got to love that challenge too. I mean, we mentioned all the strikeouts you're getting, but you know, trying to get strike two is one thing. Trying to get strike three is a whole nother uh, ball game in terms of kind of the mental game you have to play, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you just said it right there. I think just realizing before you even go out there that it's going to be a lot just to get the first strike. And then after you get the first one, it's a whole different game to get the second. So I think it's just that also comes to play in not really trying to strike out the batter. It's more of like, we need to get outs type of mindset that I feel like has helped me a lot because when you try to strike, um, when you try to strike somebody out, probably going to throw it over the plate and you can't really do that against all of these hitters, but trusting my defense has been the main key for me too. Well, now Alabama softball gearing up for a one last road trip and SEC play. Uh, what can you tell us about what's coming up this weekend against Georgia? Then you got to be thrilled to get back home to the Rhodes house for hopefully a very long time. Yeah, um, Georgia's a great team. They've been a great team. Um, we did play them my first year here and they were um, great as always. And they're well coached and they're aggressive. And I think we're really excited to see them. And we're even more excited to come back, hopefully for a long time, too. Yeah, Ole Miss the next weekend, and then you got to be thrilled. The SEC championships will be here, and you get to see all these Crimson Tide fans. And Coach Murphy on the radio show the other night said, hey, we want all the Alabama fans at all the other games, too, that are played in the SEC tournament. But it's really a special atmosphere here. Yeah, I think we're super lucky to have them this year, especially with everything going on. I mean, you would have thought that the whole season that it's been packed, and it's really only like 50% as of like two weeks ago. So I think we're we're really grateful for them still coming out here and we got the best fans in the country. So I'm looking forward to seeing them starting with Ole Miss. Yeah, we're certainly looking forward to it. And as we wrap things up, Montana, just uh, what do you focus on right now? What's most important to you to take into your next start like this weekend against Georgia and then just any appearances you have coming up? Um, For, I guess, Georgia, we're coming up here, but today, I guess it starts with practice. I mean, we're going to, I'm just going to focus on getting better each day. And whenever we step on the field, I think if it just, Take it one pitch at a time. Well, Montana, thank you so much for joining us on Crimson Drive. Best of luck against uh, Georgia coming up this weekend, and we can't wait to see you all back in Tuscaloosa. Roll Tide. Thanks for having me. Roll Tide. Montana Valts very well could be the SEC Pitcher of the Year. She's already the SEC Pitcher of the Week, and it was really fun to catch up with Montana Fouts to hear kind of all about the season she's having that I know for you softball fans, kind of learning how she approaches pitching really was fun to hear that from Montana. So best of luck to the Crimson Tide this week at Georgia and then home for a while after that to get ready to head back to Rhodes Stadium. Speaking of SEC Championships, the men's golf team here at the University of Alabama just had a long weekend, a long week really, and St. Simon Islands, Georgia for the SEC championship and made it to the semifinal before falling to Vanderbilt. So here to talk with us about the entire run that the Crimson Tide had in South Georgia from this past weekend. Let's say hello to Crimson Tide men's golf coach, J.C. Well. Joined now by J.C. Well, the head men's golf coach for the University of Alabama and coach Roll Tide. How did everything go at the SEC championships? Roll, t- roll Tide, Roger. Um, it was a good week. Um, you always hate to lose um, at the end. Um, but I'm really proud of our guys. I thought it was a great week. Um, I think we grew a lot as a team. Um, I think we, it's not only in just our game, but our trust in each other and confidence. And so, you know, we finished second in the stroke play, um, which is a, is a big deal. In fact, had an incredible second round and then, uh, you know, and then we're able to finish second and take the second, the number two seed going into the match play. And I'll beat a very good South Carolina team in the first round. And then, Got beat by the eventual champion Vanderbilt Commodores in the semifinals. Um, so there's no shame in that. Um, they're a very good team. Um, and I think we learned a lot about ourselves during the whole process. What can you tell our fans about how this event is organized? First of all, it's in St. Simons Island, Georgia. But uh, what kind of course uh, were you guys playing on? Yeah, so it's a PGA Tour event, golf course. They play the RSM there in November. I guess it's been a tour event there for about seven or eight years now. Um, we've been there since uh, 2000, I believe. I think the first one was 2000. So for the last 20, 21 years, um, we've been at Sea Island um, at, at the Seaside Course. And, and it's an incredible um, facility, um, an unbelievable golf course. And this year was, you know, probably what I would call one of the toughest times since we've been there because the wind blew literally from four different directions while we were there. And so the wind blows, the protection of the golf courses um, is the wind, very few trees, very, you know, it's, it, it is literally kind of goes around the bay. Um, right there in, at Sea Island, and so it's a great test. Um, it's a different type of test than we usually have, you know, inland or most of our teams. So it it's an adjustment for all of us. But I think it really rewards great shot making and um, imagination around the greens. And it, it 
you know, it, just like the SEC always does. It, it, in this golf course, will always identify the best team. And, you know, and this year it did with Vanderbilt. They were kind of the best team going in, them in Georgia, and, uh, and Vanderbilt ended up winning. Well, you mentioned the Crimson Tide and stroke play had an incredible second round. I was curious what adjustments were made from the first round of the second round to give you guys so much success. Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, basically, we just, you know, we are a very young team. We had three guys making their debut in the SEC this year. We had two guys because of COVID last year couldn't play. And so this year's, so technically there were three freshmen making their um, debut and Davis Shore was coming back from injury and hadn't played for two months. And so we were a little, you know, a little nervous, rusty. And um, so basically we just tried to do what we've been doing. We were prepared. The guys prepared really nice, uh, had a great week of preparation going into it and just tried to settle down and just, you know, trust what we've done. And boy, did they. We didn't make a bogey the last 10 holes and anybody on the team and uh, a very impressive day when it was very tough. It blew over 20 miles an hour from the north, which was a really hard, hard golf course. And we were the only team to break par. And we did. We beat the field by a lot that day. Of course, Alabama came close in stroke play. What can you tell us about the transition to the match play portion of the event? Yeah, when you and then all of a sudden, you know, I guess it's been about five years now where we transitioned our SEC from a stroke play to, and, and we wanted it to resemble the, you know, how the NCAA championships are are now competing. And so it's really two tournaments: one to get into the second one, and so. Uh, and and so after you get done, stroke play and match play are two totally different, you know, animals. They really are. And so you have to, there are different rules, there's different mindset. And so you have to do a quick turnaround and it becomes more of a man on man um, mindset. You're playing one guy, um, score doesn't matter. It's just beating that guy is all that matters. And so you have to go through a, a you know, a, a pretty good change after the, you know, you battle and you battle and you battle and you battle with everybody in the SEC. And then all of a sudden now it's, a whole new golf tournament. And so it takes, a, um, I think that's where experience really uh, matters um, the most is understanding the process, which the championship has. And like I said, we had three guys making their debut and they, they even in the first round when we won it, it, it South, against South Carolina, it was a little bit of an adjustment. And so I think our guys gained great um, experience through the process. And you got to love golf at this time of the year. You've been a head coach, of course, for national champions, SEC champions before. What kind of mindset does it take? What are some common threads you've seen from all of your championship teams? You, you got to have that bravado. You got to have swag if you want to use today's terms. You need to have a confidence in your, not only in your preparation in each other, but, it, you know, because it, it, it's hard um, and you, you have to have that intangible. And I think we're learning that intangible. I think it is, I think that is a grown, I don't think, I don't think that you can say well, we're going to win. I don't think that's a false bravado. I think that's as bad as not having one. And so I think we're a growing team, I think. And so I think if you're ever going to win a championship, you need to have a confidence, not only in yourself, but in the man behind you and the man in front of you, that they're going to do their job. And when it gets hard, they have the ability to get through those tough times in, in, in that, that is a, special chemistry that I think has developed. So now the SEC championships are in the rearview mirror. Now you're looking forward to the NCAAs and we'll find out on May 5th where the Crimson Tide will be seated uh, getting ready for the NCAA men's golf selection show. So what can you tell us about how that event is organized and what you want to see out of your team gearing up for May 17th to the 19th? Yeah, well, um, you know, there's six sites right now. So we, we know we'll be at least at one of those six sites. Now, which one, we don't know. We're pretty familiar with about three of them. Um, and two were not. The West Coast ones were not. And so we'll find out May 5th where we're going. Now, it's a different type of pressure. I mean, it literally is just a qualifying tournament to get to the NCAAs. And so every shot is, is, is very important. And, I, you know, I think after, after the, you know, a tough regular season and the SECs, and now exam week this week, um, we're going to need to kind of a, a few days and then we're going to have to really kind of get back after it again and change a mindset, understand this is a championship season. This is the NCA. So you really preparation will start next Wednesday um, when we get our selection and then we'll go for about 11 days of prep to, to get ourselves ready. But it's probably the most nerve wracking of, of all the terms we play in because it really is only stroke play and you're only trying to qualify to make it to the NCAA championships. And there's a lot of great teams there. And so you need to be good. It's a nervous part for a coach. It's probably the most nervous turn we play in as a coach because you, 
you know, you either play it, you either make it to the finals or you don't. And, you know, and, and so a whole season, you know, hinges on three rounds of golf. Well, the selection show coming up on May 5th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central on the Golf Channel. And always Alabama fans get fired up for this time of the year. You got to love how much attention goes towards golf at this time of the year for not only the Crimson Tide, but for college golf. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, college golf has grown tremendously over the last 15, 20 years. And I think especially since we started televising the SEC championship now live and the, uh, the NCAAs. And I think it, it's good. It's good TV. It's good, you know, it's, uh, it's a great atmosphere. And I think people, and we've been able to win and, and create some special moments here at Alabama. And so people no longer, it's not, a, it's obscure, but not as obscure as it was maybe five to 10 years ago. And so we have a lot of great fans and a lot of great support throughout the whole week. My, 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 um, my phone was going off, a lot of people following our guys. And I always try to relay, relay that to our guys because golf tends to be a, on the island sport. You, know, you seem like you're by yourself, but there are a lot of people pulling for us and it makes us feel good. And I think it gives us a lot of great energy and confidence moving forward. You're also the swing coach for head coach Nick Saban. How is the swing uh, looking earlier this week? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, you know, he's got big stuff coming up. You know, the region's coming up and, you know, he's been in a better place. Let's put it that way. But he'll be fine by then. Um, he's a great competitor and a good athlete. And uh, we got Coach Potter out the other day, too. So we had four eyes on him um, the other day. He needed a little more special attention. But I think he's trending in the right direction now. Of course, you've gained a lot of notoriety, of course, working with, working with Coach Saban. Have you worked with Coach Oates very much? I know he loves yes. to play. Yeah, he, he, you know, he is a true novice. Um, he, when he came here, I don't even think he knew what end of the club to hold. And so, but he's made tremendous strides. Um, and I remember the, you know, making contacts, all we were trying to do the first time we started working with him. And, but now he's way better. It, it, it's much better. And I think golf has become a release for him as it has for Coach Saban. And so, he is not in Coach Saban's league yet, but he's willing to work to get there. So he's getting, he is a lot better than, now than he was six months ago. <laughs> really sounds good. Well, Coach Sewell, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on a great run of the SECs. Now we can't wait to see your team compete in the NCAA regionals and then eventually the NCAA championships. But thank you for your time today and roll tide. Roll tide, Roger. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. It was say uh, at the end talking about the golf games of Nick Saban and Nate Oates. Jay Sewell, of course, helping those guys out, but his main job is helping the Crimson Tide golf team out. And we can't wait to see what's coming up for the men's team and Mick Potter's women's team. We hope to have a conversation with him in the next few weeks as well as they make their run in the NCAA regionals and then hopefully the NCAA championships. We'll switch gears now back to softball. We started our show with Montana Fouts. How about the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Patrick Murphy? Yesterday, he was able to meet with the media and really preview what's coming up for the Crimson Tide against Georgia. That's the last road series of the year before the Crimson Tide really settle in here to Tuscaloosa at Road Stadium. But I think you'll enjoy getting to hear Patrick Murphy meet with the media from earlier this week. Hey, good morning, everybody. It was uh, a really fun week last week with uh, Southern Miss and Louisiana coming to town. And, um, you know, it just it's a rarity for us to have such a good non-conference matchup that late in the season. So I can't thank them enough for coming over and you know, it's going to be a, uh, I think it'll be a really good rivalry in the future because we're going to a tournament in 22 in Youngsville, Louisiana, and then we'll probably pick up a single game against uh, uh, Louisiana at their home park uh, sometime during that road trip. So we're looking forward to going down to Cajun Country next year, and hopefully it'll be a uh, the start of a continuing rivalry um, because it's Lafayette's a great city to visit, and obviously, if you've been there, you know how good the food is. So, looking forward to that. And then, um, you know, almost I'd say 80% of our kids are done now with finals. Um, it was a good semester. Can't thank uh, our academic advisor enough, Jenny Sanders, for all that she's done over a very, very um, difficult year and a half. Uh, she's always been the one that's um, kept everybody on track, and she does a terrific job. So thanks to Jenny and everybody over at uh, Bill Battle Academic Center. All right, if you have questions for Coach Murphy, hit the raise hand button, and we'll call on you one by one, and we'll start things off with Katie. Hey, Coach, good morning. Um, good morning. With all the, with all the changes uh, on the team this year, kind of with injuries, and lineups constantly changing. How nice is it to have the consistency and reliability of Montana in the circle? 
Well, you know, I've said over and over and over, and I think I probably said it to you guys after a, a post game, you know, this year, among any other year, you know, everybody can look at themselves, can see their situation, and, and they can honestly say, I can do difficult things. You know, this team has showed so much grit, resiliency, um, and you know it, you're, you know, anybody that's been in college this past couple of years, it's been a tough situation for everybody. And you can look back and you can honestly say, you know, you're resilient, you have grit, so you can do difficult things in your future. And the same with our young ladies. Uh, and Montana is just, um, she's been the rock. Um, you know, she set herself up for this situation though way back in August, because champions are made in the off season and that's definitely her. Uh, she made it a point to get in the best shape of her life. She worked really, really hard with Michelle Diltz, our strength coach, um, to make sure that she was good to go from February through June, whatever it is on the championship day. And she has done that and more. And, you know, she's, she's the type that'll find something extra to do to make herself better, whether drinking more water, um, anything nutrition-wise, um, physical-wise, strength-wise. I mean, she's, she's going to find what it takes to have an advantage. All right, go ahead, Robert. Coach, obviously you'll be heading to Georgia this weekend for your series. Whenever you watch um, Georgia play a home game through the TV, it's always loud and it seems like a very great environment, a hard environment for the opposing team. How is this beneficial in the long run and how do you, um, um, it looks like it'll be your hardest, or I guess the hardest environment to play on the road this season thus far. Um, what do you tell your players going into that? Well, some of our kids have been there, you know, and obviously most have not, but it is a great atmosphere. Uh, their stands go straight up. So all the noise comes right into the field. There's just nowhere for the noise to, to go, but out onto the field. Um, you know, I think, um, Lou is, is due for renovation of her stadium. And I think after we renovated ours last year, they are the ones that have not had anything done to their stadium since they built it way back in 1997. So um, I'm sure that'll be happening here because she's been a winner year in and year out, you know, been to regionals every year for probably 20 years in a row. So she's earned it and they deserve it. But, um, you know, it's a great place to play. It's a hitter's park for sure. Um, you know, and it's, I think they're at around 30% capacity for fans. So um, it seats around 2000. So that might be, I don't know what that would, that would be, but um, it's still going to be a great atmosphere and we love to play over there. And we have a lot of alums from Georgia. You know, the, the, the states that we recruited most from, obviously Alabama, Texas, Florida, and Georgia. So we do have a lot of uh, former players that live in the Atlanta area and uh, Dekula. Um, so a lot of them are over there. All right, go back to Katie. Kind of building off Robert's question about playing at Georgia. Obviously, they beat number one Oklahoma at home a couple weeks ago. Uh, what does that kind of speak about the depth of the SEC? And then how does playing in stuff, such a strong conference prepare y'all for postseason? Yeah, I texted Lou and Tony uh, that night and said, congrats, that was a great win. And that was typical Georgia softball. I mean, it was back and forth. It looked like Georgia had it and Oklahoma gets a hit. And then, you know, they never, ever quit. And that's been the um, theme of a Lou Harris Champer coach team, you know, for the past 20 years. They just do not quit. So we have to keep playing as well. Uh, it was great for our conference. I think. Um, Georgia was either eighth or ninth at the time in the SEC. And for them to knock off Oklahoma and give them the first loss, it says a lot about our league. So um, just a big win for her, their team, their program, but also for the SEC. All right, go ahead, Robert. Coach, um, how has the defensive practice been like this week? Any new drills you're adding this week? We just been, uh, you know, I thought Taylor and Savannah and Maddie. Maddie has just been terrific the last shoot since we played Florida. She's been rock solid at third base. Uh, Savannah and both Taylor made really good plays this weekend against Louisiana, against Southern Miss. And now it's kind of in that time of the season where we do more situational uh, things on defense. And 
put runners on and, and really make them think. Um, that was probably you know one of the negatives. I think it was Saturday against Louisiana where our decision making wasn't quick enough. Um, it, they were a little late on their decision. Um, it turned out to be pretty good decisions, but by the time they got the ball to the base, the runner had beat the ball. So um, we do a drill where we say uh, medium or fast runners, and then the defense has to play in terms of, okay, this is a fast person. I have to go really, really fast um, with my throw, with my footwork, whatever, or if you have time, you know. So uh, it's, it's fun for everybody, and then we do the same thing with the outfield. So we put runners on base. We give them uh, inning and score, how many outs. Um, they really like a, you know, like it's the bottom of the seventh. There's two outs. There's a runner at second. Alabama's up two to one, and they have to make a do or die throw to the plate. And if she's out, we win. If she's safe, it's a tie ball game. So, uh, you know, outfielders get maybe, maybe three opportunities to do that in a season, and usually all three of those are like the biggest situations of the year, you know, like to win or lose a game or something like that. So um, it's a great play for an outfielder, and that's why it's called a do or die. All right, Robert, do you have another one? Yes. Um, coach like yourself, Coach Lou Harris Chamber has coached in the SEC for quite a while. What is your guys' relationship like? What have you learned from her? What has she learned from you? Well, she's she's been, you know, consistent as a winner year in and year out. Um, it's always, you know, a tough, tough team to play. Uh, they play hard. They're always a good hitting team. Um, you know, she did a clinic one time, probably 15, 18 years ago, and I was lucky enough to be there. And I learned a ton from her. And um, I think after that, she quit doing them because I learned too much from her and, um, you know, it helped us. But um, very knowledgeable, um, just her team, Plays just like her, you know, gritty, competitive, uh, never give up. So it's it's been fun to play against them. Good luck to Coach Murphy, Montana Fouts, and all the Crimson Tide as they make their way to Athens, Georgia for this three-game series against the Georgia Bulldogs. And then, of course, at home next weekend against Ole Miss, home after that for the SEC Championships, home then for what we hope will be the regionals, Super Regionals for the Crimson Tide. Just a great time of the year for the Alabama softball team. We had a milestone this past week. It was April 27th, 2011, when we had devastating tornadoes not only here in Tuscaloosa, but all throughout the state of Alabama. And we had the 10-year anniversary of that devastating day from now 10 years ago earlier this week. So it was head coach Nick Saban of the football team meeting with the media to talk about what he remembered from that day and also the rebuilding effort that Alabama football was able to help in for not only this community, but communities all across the state. So we'll let you listen in now to Coach Saban's press conference from earlier this week. Well, obviously, this is a day to be remembered by a lot of folks and how they were affected by probably one of the most devastating uh, storms, tornadoes that uh, this part of the state has ever seen. Uh, this certainly is something that affected our community uh, in a huge way, personally, uh, affected our team, affected our families. Uh, and we all know somebody who was affected, you know, by this storm uh, in a pretty dramatic way. So, um, but I also think that uh, because of this storm, it really galvanized the community in a lot of ways. A lot of people came together to really help each other. Uh, a lot of people contributed to what we had to do to rebuild our community. And um, it's actually better now than ever before. Uh, but um, certainly something that um, our presence was really necessary uh, was something that, you know, we try to do a lot for a lot of people, Terry and I, Nick's kids, um, but I think our presence just being there for people was probably one of the most important things that we did. And I think it's a lesson for a lot of us to learn that when something bad happens, you know, people need the support of other people. And uh, we, we, it's something that really made us feel a part of the community. Okay, with that coach, we'll... Uh... That coach. Start with Stephen. Go ahead, Stephen. Coach, I remember you. Uh, 
you talked about getting your team to band together, to go out there and help the community during that time. But how special was it for you to see the 2011 and 2012 football teams play for that community, win championships for that community, and just see how the community was in it with the football team to win those championships? How, how proud did that make you? Well, I think, first of all, I was really proud of our team. Um, I think it's it's a really important sort of lesson uh, of life uh, for these guys to learn how to give, uh, give back to the community, give back to our fans, give back to the people who supported us, which is exactly what I said to the players 10 years ago. And, you know, their response to that was phenomenal in terms of things that they did uh, out in the community to help other people. Uh, I know the players helped Miss Terry with Nick's kids. Um, you know, Thompson Tractor gave bulldozers and she had Fluker on the bulldozer. And uh, I think it galvanized our team. And I think our team really wanted to uh, accomplish something special for the community uh, by winning a championship. And I think that uh, the community certainly uh, supported the team uh, in a different kind of spirit uh, than we've ever had motivated by what was, you know, a horrific event uh, in terms of something that we all had to deal with. But um, I do think there was a lot of positive lessons that were learned. Uh, and certainly, uh, I was really proud of our team for winning the Disney Spirit Award for community service for all the things that they did to help people in the community. So it was, it was pretty special. And with that, we'll go to Ryan Hennessy. Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, you're talking about, obviously, uh, Tuscaloosa was impacted, but what does it say about the entire state, even rival schools coming over to you guys and helping out? What does it say how the state just band together as one? Well, I think, you know, when you're talking about something like this, you're not talking about, you know, one school versus another. Uh, you're talking about people. Uh, and uh, I think everybody in the state really contributed in a positive way in many different parts of the state, and especially here in Tuscaloosa, um, a lot of Auburn folks came up here and, you know, helped uh, in a lot of ways. But again, um, I think we're talking about people, you know, we're not talking about, you know, who likes what school and all that. And I think that kind of compassion is uh, something that uh, really makes you feel proud of being a part of the state of Alabama. Okay, we'll uh, go to Cecil Hart next. Cecil, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good, Cecil. Uh, on that day, on 10 years ago today, obviously your first priority after your family was to find the players, locate them, figure out where they were. What were the emotions that you were going through during that process? Well, I, I think a lot of it was, you know, I. they said there was going to be a storm. I got in a car, I drove home. Um, there was probably, I don't know, 20. Kristen was in school. Nicholas was in school here at the time. It's probably 20 girls from Kristen's sorority, you know, at the house, boots everywhere, umbrellas everywhere, backpacks everywhere. Um, you know, concern for, you know, our son and his safety because his house was significantly damaged, you know, in the storm. Uh, and then, of course, you got your team and you got your players and how the day get affected by, you know, what happened. So it, it was a pretty anxious time, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, that anxiety didn't really let up until, you know, the next day when we sort of could assess the damage. Um, you know, we lost, one of our players lost, you know, his fiance, which was, you know, certainly something that was very difficult for all the players to deal with. But um, there was also, growing out of that anxiety, a tremendous response, you know, to help people in the community. So um, it was a pretty anxious day, no doubt. We'll go to Mike. Mike Chamberlain, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how, how did that event kind of change or shape the way you see the role that your team plays in the community? Well, I don't, I don't know that it really ever changed, um, you know, how I think. You know, we've always tried to get the players to be involved in the community, but you know, sometimes it's hard for players to understand just how can I be involved? How can I help? What can I do? Uh, and I think this tragic event, you know, just created such opportunity, you know, to help so many people in so many ways. And, um, 
I, I couldn't be prouder of the way our team responded, you know, to that. And we still have lots of guys who do a really good job in community service and trying to, you know, help other people in the community. I think compassion for other people is, you know, a quality that um, sometimes gets a little undervalued, but uh, is probably one of the best qualities anybody can have. And we'll finish up with uh, Steve Moulton. Steve, go ahead. Coach, uh, you mentioned Nick's kids already, uh, but I do wonder from 10 years ago how much that changed you personally with the tie that you have with Tuscaloosa since that event. Uh, I, I do think it sort of galvanized, you know, uh, us in this community in a lot of ways, a lot of relationships uh, that were formed and forged, you know, from what happened on that tragic day. Um, all the people who support Nick's kids became, you know, friends and family, and we became a part of the community. And I know Miss Terry's working on the 18th house, and that that all got born out of the, you know, this whole tornado in terms of 13 houses that we built pretty immediately, uh, and the players' contribution to those houses. You know, I mean, it's pretty amazing when we're building the house and two is up on the scaffold and I got to tell Miss Terry, how can he do something on the ground? Um, but, you know, sort of those memories and uh, having all these uh, young people knowing that they contributed something to help somebody else is, it's a really good feeling. And I think it, it sort of galvanized us as a part of this community. All right, coach. Thank you. That's all the questions we've got. Today. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good day. Good to hear from the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, again, reflecting back on 10 years ago, the devastating tornadoes here in Tuscaloosa and all across the state of Alabama. Well, moving forward, we have a very busy weekend coming up across the network, and we continue to look at what's ahead for Alabama athletics. So let's go ahead and take a look at this weekend's schedule. First of all, the softball team getting started at 5 o'clock on Friday, Saturday at 12. Sunday at 1, we'll have radio coverage of all of those games that Alabama plays against Georgia. So I hope you listen in to all of those. We'll do the same for the baseball team. They are at home in Tuscaloosa in what is a huge series against Missouri. Alabama really trying to bounce back as the Crimson Tide went 1-2 and two last weekend against Kentucky. Now, very winnable games coming up against Missouri. Friday at 6 o'clock, Saturday at 2 o'clock, Sunday at 11 a.m. Head to RollTide.com for parking information because it will be very busy on campus, especially right there next to Coleman Coliseum with Sewell Thomas Stadium being right there. A lot of parking issues coming up with commencement. So again, go to RollTide.com. I believe you can park in the capstone deck for free to go to the baseball games coming up so make sure you get all those details at rolltide.com a great weekend series coming up for baseball home against Missouri softball on the road at Georgia this is going to wrap up this edition of Crimson Drive special thanks to Ethan Carabin our producer for putting all of this together thanks as well to our guests Montana Fouts and Jay Sewell as well to Nick Saban and Patrick Murphy for their press conferences provided to us by the University of Alabama Athletic Department we'll be back next week at 2 p.m. right back here on the CTSN Facebook and Twitter pages for another edition of Crimson Drive but until then have a safe start to your weekend good night and roll tight everyone <laughs>